Hi everyone, this is New Beer Watcher. It's July 17th, 2016. And what I'm going to show you today is something I was reluctant to show you. But let me get right into it. So I believe what you're looking at here. Yeah, pretty weird, isn't it? I didn't want to post that. I didn't want to even talk about it until I watched it long enough about it and it came to me in a vision what's going on in this picture and how to present it to you so what I did here was this website this is in Switzerland and you're like what is that yeah what is that okay well I'm gonna put it right there in the title massive planet overshadows hex cloaking device yeah so this website, the best way to get the pictures, if you do just the time lapse, you will just time lapse hour by hour, or the other one, you'll click day by day, and you'll miss everything in between. So you have to click here to get every 10 minutes, and that's what I've done. So let's go to the present today and go all the way back and investigate what's going on in this all the way back to June when this thing first appeared. And it is a planet that's approaching us. It is its closest perigee to the Earth right now. <sighs> yeah. And I want to focus your eyes on this hex that pretty much doesn't move. It's in sync with the Earth. It has to be. And this thing is facing the southwest. It's in Switzerland. It is in the Aquarius constellation, just where I expected it to be. And so... Notice it cannot be a spot lens because it disappears and reappears. So how could that be possible in the exact same shape? So, yeah, lots of questions. I'll try and answer as many as possible. But here we go. Going back and forth time to prove to you. Now these lines on the camera, this hexagonal lens flare, yeah, it's a lens flare, the cloaking device. It's reflecting onto the camera itself. Remember, we're going back in time. Expect the scene too. And we even see Nibiru in here. So here we see the hexagonal shape, and we can see the sun is now reflecting, mixing with the shadow of the planet, and now refracting off the hexagonal object also. So as we continue forward in time, we can see this is the real object overshadowing the hexagonal object. They can't hide shadows. This is light bending technology. There is no such thing as shadow bending technology. This is a one hour video clip. I can't post an entire hour on there because I haven't found a way to do that yet. Uh, perhaps in the future I will post this whole thing. You can go ahead and do this yourself. I will leave a link in the description. This object here is Nibiru. It's moving fast. I call it Nibiru because it's in the camera a very large, short time. It is not visible with the naked eye. See the ISO setting up here is 1600. F-stop, very fairly large with a 20 second exposure rate. Now, here we see the shadow approaching here. And it's gonna, let me fast forward this video. And here we see the shadow. Notice how it moves around the hexagonal object. See that? When the sun comes up, it blocks it out. And it looks all white on there. And there's some night shots. Again, we see the appearance of this massive shadow. See that? How it comes down. It continues to cloak as the planet gets behind this. It's a fairly stable orbit. At the end of the video, explain the orbit how this is possible that a planet can appear to be fixed in space look right there by the way look at the shadow of this thing casting on the lens now right here and there's our hexagonal and people are seeing hexagonal clouds it's actually light distorting the hexagonal shadow so you can cloak the actual object but you can't cloak the shadow around it Got. It was only capable of blocking planets when they're further away. So I thought I'd save that shot. You can almost make out the hexagonal clouds. And then 
it's gone. There is no hexagonal, and then it reappears. See, clearly there's nothing on the lens right now. It's not on the lens. It's out there in outer space, probably using anti-gravity technology to keep it perfectly fixed in space. And there's one for every planet except for Nibiru. It's going too fast. And we've seen the Nibiru on there with its cloud. And here you can see it, evidence of the same hexagonal object. I don't think it get any clearer. And now you can see the hexagonal light shining through this object, brighter than it should be, overcompensating for the light in the area. And next, we can see at this part of the film, I clicked on it in large image, and here you can still see this hexagonal sun. I thought that was pretty stunning. Look at that. Do you see the hexagon? never seen anything like this before so I know it's pretty stalking pretty stunning there are a couple times in this video that I stop click on the image enlarge it and again there it reappears you can't say it's a spot on the lens because really a perfect hexagon they completely disappeared and reappeared the same okay I believe that this thing is gonna come through during Yom Kippur in October 12th, October 31st, I believe will be a sign in the heavens, some sort of eclipse or something going on. I will try and explain that at the end of this video with some solar software, or at least in another video. There's really a lot to show you here and show you hardcore proof. Look at that. You see the shadow through the clouds. So this is the actual planet. That thing is doing a pretty good job cloaking it until now. And I expect to get bigger and bigger. And I expect them, well, I will be surprised if this camera gets taken offline or completely make it look like it never existed. So I want to show you some key things while I'm still going here. Is again, couldn't be a spot on the lens when it's moving and getting lighter and darker. And completely disappears and reappears at the same shit, same hexagon. But again, I want noticed mostly how this shadow drifts around this object with this real object over here. So I believe here's the planet up here. This is behind it, casting a much larger shadow. So I'm basically overshadowing the cloaking object. Hexagon. And it's a little more information. Look, it doesn't rotate like I thought it did. Go back in time. See, see this moving here? You see how the move with the planet. See how the shadow's moving around the hexagonal shape. It's doing a pretty good job being centered up with it, though. And you may ask yourself, why is it only this camera? Well, there may be other cameras. But this one, I believe it's looking almost right more closer down the barrel of the cloaking device and planet than any other camera on the lens. We'd be surprised if you start seeing them or at least going completely offline. I'm really grateful that I was able to go back an entire month on this video. Please copy, like, and share. You're welcome to post this on your own YouTube account. I have no problem with that. Look at that. You see how the shadow is going through that? And here comes the sun. It washes it out. The refraction of the hexagonal. Again, take notice of the ISO settings during each film clip. Wow. It won't be long. You, you might even be able to see that with the naked eye. But it's a shorter exposure time. I wonder what that must have looked like. That might have looked kind of dimmed out the sky a little bit there. Oh, and one other thing about the fake suns and the fake moons. That every time that this massive planet, uh, say that we're supposed to have a full moon and it's eclipsed by this object, 
then they'll just turn on the fake moon and keep on looking normal. Or when it eclipses our sun and we're supposed to have a solar eclipse, turn on the fake sun with the NASA fake star system on one of the arms of the International Space Station, turn this thing on, which just happens to be in the same orbital path that the sun is in. Isn't that amazing? Could have been any orbit. It's got to follow the sun. <laughs> uh, so here we go, some more up back and forth in time as this thing slowly gets smaller and smaller. Again, stay tuned at the end of this video camera uh, video. I'll attach a quick explanation clip of this orbital path. And, oh, look at the cam trails. They're bringing on that thing now, right? Look at that. They're hitting that thing so hard they just can't make up for light. How do you hide the absence of light? Whew. Look at that. See how the shadow just, when this thing comes into view and it eclipses it, that's how big it is. Well, please like and share this video. Again, the orbital thing, the orbital path, or explanation of how this is even possible to appear still in the sky day after day for probably a week at a time before it finally leaves. Uh, here's a good shot. See how it is pretty much the planet's moved down here. It's not even centered on the cloaking device. I'll just let it play through on this one. And there's the red clouds. Okay, then we'll show the next one. Here's where we see this happen during the rain. Makes more sense now, right? See how the object is getting behind the cloaking device and we also have water on the lens. Also, yes, this is water. This is not. You see the difference? That, yeah, probably a spun lens. I'm not even talking about that stuff. And look at the chemtrails. Here's a ship comes in the view. Cloaking device. And then we see this cloaking device in our way again seem to rotate so hope that explains a lot please like and share this video and uh, if you don't know Jesus Christ make him your Lord and Savior the time is short it's the only way we're gonna escape this global disaster have a blessed day hi everyone this is Nibiru watcher and what you're looking at here is what I believe to be uh, kind of an idea to show you the orbit of this strange planet. Uh, the one I'm going to show you is not Nibiru, but the type of orbit that it has around Nemesis, the second sun that's in our solar system. Now, this is not to scale, not the colors, but just to show you how that these planets can be appearing to be perfectly still in space while the Earth is rotating around our sun. And that isn't actually that hard, just a little imagination or some software. So here we are looking down at our solar system. This would be the sun here. I'll zoom in on that a little bit. And so now I'm going to show you next is a cloaking device because, <laughs> okay, so this is our sun and this is Nemesis. And this is the Earth. If we look down, we can see in this example how this is possible that Nemesis, the second stun, the parent orbiting body of the four planets or seven planets, nine planets. I've only seen seven, but there could be more. But I'm just talking about this one, make it simple. And I've named this Nemesis as it's tracking around the ecliptic, traveling in its binary orbit around our sun and heading on its way back to the Orion system, I believe. So now let's look at this orbit as we look at it, that this would be this planet here. These would be their moons of this planet. 
um, the orbiter. These moons are kind of screwed up. Just focus on this planet here. Now this one here is, if we look at it, as it, uh, as it faces the sun, these moons are also in this extreme eccentric orbit around Nemesis. That's what I believe this planet is doing. If we was to speed this up, actually it's as fast as it can go. As this planet starts to approach, it slows down and then it speeds up and then accelerates and approaches Nemesis. But in an Earth-facing view, you can see how this would appear to be almost perfectly still as we view this from the planet Earth. The orbit of this strange planet uh, probably has its inclination off a little bit. Excuse me. So that it would basically be at a right angle at our horizon from the 45th latitude on the Earth. At least that's where I saw it in New York. Okay, so I hope that kind of explains this orbit and how that this is possible. Next, 